I'm Ashley. And I'm Kristen. I'm Mary. And I'm Sarah. Okay, just to start off, we're going to start off with some background information about our client. And Someone Cares Soup Kitchen is a nonprofit organization with a mission dedicated to providing the homeless with a daily balanced nutritional meal. And there's just some statistical background on Someone Cares and the, on the public they serve right now. So that's mainly what it consists of. So in our so in our like analysis of the situation after we had our consultation meeting with our client, with we had a meeting with the executive director Shannon Santos, and so we were able to kind of get a sense of who they were when we met with them at the soup kitchen. And through our research, we found that hunger is a serious problem in the United States, and it can be solved with organizations like Someone Cares and public interest in taking a stand against homelessness. And so we also gathered that. Coalitions can influence communities and demonstrate changes that benefit human and that benefit human and organizational needs. So, first, I'm just going to also describe a little bit about like how we came to these conclusions. It's just during the consultation meeting, we were given like a lengthy rundown of their communication plan and uh, and the actions that they have taken, and we found out through like a lot of like sponsorships they have one with Trader Joe's. And Uh, events that they do. They're also, that's a way they help uh, get funds provided for them. And we kind of did a, we did a SWOT analysis. So like we detailed some of the strengths, which was their par partnerships with like Trader Joe's. They have like a really strong website right now that like has so much information for anybody who's interested in learning more about the organization. They can be directed to that website. Um, they put on annual events. They have like a holiday event that goes on, but we couldn't really work with that because it would be beyond the timeline of our class. And so some weaknesses that we found was that they have, so their website was a little bit outdated, like some of the information needed to be up, uh, needed to be more recent. And they had a Facebook page to start social media, but it was just like a little inconsistent and needed some maintenance. And so opportunities that we found were that we could update portions of their website to make it more current and active with its public and the current people they have following them on social media, and that we could also build a relationship with the younger demographic for potential volunteers, because we found out that they really had no connection to like anybody who was like younger in our demographic, like the college students they have like through that holiday event, they're able to reach out to like the suburban community in Costa Mesa where they're located to be able to have those people aware of what they do and be involved with them. So that's why we thought it'd be a great opportunity for us to start our campaign focusing on like college students and just bringing in volunteers and bringing them aware of their, their, uh, their Facebook their Facebook page and in more of our research we noticed some threats and threats kind of could be technology because we couldn't really use a Twitter page because mainly some of the people that they serve probably wouldn't have any ways of accessing too much technology and that we also found the threat is that just like their volunteer program they have also other programs that do like after school tutoring and stuff like that which weren't really emphasized a lot so we thought those were opportunities that help further their, further our clients. Okay, so to sum it up, our goal for this campaign was basically to create like a greater aware and like increase of someone cares in the whole hunger and homeless epidemic through the use of social and traditional media. Basically, someone cares, like they have a really good networking base and they have a lot of volunteers and whatnot, but the majority of people who work there are like older, so they don't really know that much about social media and like technology and whatnot. So we decided to focus mainly on like, um, like Facebook and like more of like traditional media tactics. Um, for the objectives, we decided prior to research that the four ways to better get the word out would be through the revamp of Facebook. Obviously, their Facebook page really lacked, like Ashley mentioned, um, before we took over like the info section of Facebook, I'm sure you guys know exactly, you know what I'm talking about, the info side, um, basically had like stats from 2010 and it was talking about the holiday campaign and it was kind of like weird because it wasn't updated and it didn't really make sense and like they didn't 
have like a mission statement or like what the place is about. So um, what we did is we wanted to obviously add more about um, add more about like the brief history, philosophy. You know, they didn't even have a location up on there or a phone number. And I mean, a lot of people go to Facebook to find this stuff, and it would have obviously helped put that up there. Um, the next one was the use of online surveys. Basically, in order to get an actual idea of what our key public thought, we thought it'd be a good way to send out a survey. Basically, it asks questions anywhere from like the person's age to if they've heard of someone cares, or if they've like ever volunteered, or do they know what volunteering is. Um, basically, this was a way to find out like our key public interest, um, like what they thought about it, you know, just to give us a better idea of it. Um, so basically, we sent it out to friends and and like college kids, and we sent it out to like sororities and fraternities, the majority of Cal State Fullerton students. Um, the next one is we decided that'd be a good time to propose a collaboration. I mean, it is the holiday season, so it's like kind of prime time for like charity events and like drives and whatnot. So we thought it'd be a good, good idea to get involved in one of these. That way we can possibly set up a booth and you know, talk more about someone cares to perspective, perspectives like passerbys. And then we also wanted to make some kind of like a like a flyer or informational brochure. That way we can like give them like statistics on like hunger and homelessness and like more information on someone cares. That way they can take it home with them and see. Um, and then we decided that with that, with the proposed collaboration, it would make a lot of sense to make a news release. Um, we decided either to send it out to Daily Titan, which is obviously for the majority of our key public college students, um, or it could have been like if it was outside of school, it could have been maybe to like the local newspaper. Um, the good thing about news releases is that it's a fast and like inexpensive way to get the word out. It's basically like the who, what, where, when, and why of that event. Okay, um, our key public with our campaign was like obviously college students because we're a college run campaign and um, it's just for open-hearted and open-minded Cal State Fullerton students who are looking to volunteer and to learn more about the less fortunate and someone cares because we noticed that there was a lack of knowledge between the two through the survey we put out um, and just college students on our um, campus that would benefit from the philanthropic work through their fraternities, some clubs do philanthropic work and um, sororities as well. Strategies and tactics. Uh, first strategy was to revamp the page. Like Mary said, it hadn't been updated since 2010. So what we did was fill out the information section, adding <coughs> pictures from the events we did, visiting the Someone Care Soup Kitchen multiple times, taking pictures, new pictures, uploading them, making Facebook statuses. We each constantly um, shared the link on our pages to our PSU's network through peak hours of the day. So we really just disseminated the Someone Care Soup, um, Soup Kitchen new page like multiple times in the day throughout the campaign so we can create more awareness. Um, the second tactic we did was make a brochure, um, just pretty much outlining Someone Care Soup Kitchen goals, missions, um, opportunities, and um, how they impact the community. And um, we also um, passed that out during the collaboration collaboration we did with the hunger and homeless group. Um, but um, Mary's gonna show you that page. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I I'm gonna show you like actually what we did to the Facebook page so you guys can see. Um, or people would ask questions like, 
um, this person asked if they would, if we would post like more information about like volunteering during the holiday season, which is really big at Someone Cares. Um, also, it's basically like, and then right here we added a new album. This was from Hunger and Homeless Week. I don't know, there's a bunch of pictures, so I don't look through it. Um, <laughs> But basically, it helps to add pictures on there too because a lot of people like the pictures rather than just words, so they can actually like get a feel of what was going on. And then we also added another album prior to this. Uh, we went down there one weekend during a busy Saturday, and we took just like candid pictures of everyone, you know, cooking and like eating and whatnot. So it's pretty cool. Um, and then this is for their holiday campaign. You know, we just collaborated with the holiday campaign page and just pretty much publicized it. That way both of the fans could see it. So it was good because we're consistently updating the Facebook because before we took over, it was probably like once a month that they would update it. And the last time they did it was like back in July. So. And it just says we love our volunteers. It wasn't <laughs> like anything like informational about the organization. Our, our third tactic, we used the online survey. We did this about a week before our collaborative event with the Volunteer Service Center, just proposing questions, how the, how old are our target demographic between 18 and 25, have you heard of the Volunteer Service Center, do you volunteer, things like that, just to gauge where they are. Um, and our last strategy for is, was to inform and increase active participation among Cal State Fullerton students and to increase the volunteer, particularly with someone cares we collaborated with the VSD during their Hungry Homeless Week, which they do every year. This is the third one, well, it's the third time they've done it. Uh, it was November 14th and 15th. We set up a booth. We were able to get a booth at the end of their exhibit on the 14th, where we had a canned food box where we collected canned foods, and we had our brochures passed out, and we had a sign-in sheet where we could collect um, new volunteers, potential volunteers for the client. And I also have one thing to say, sorry. Um, there was a total of 438 students that passed through the exhibit that day, so that kind of gives a perspective of how many people we either interacted with, reached, things like that. Oh, and um, we just chose social media as one of the major influence as, as an effective target because it can be powerful for spurring social change, and other nonprofits such as Invisible Children have used social media, and they've use that in gaining a lot of money for their charity. So we've seen that 97% of nonprofits now are using social media as an either primary way or it is very effective for the nonprofit in getting what they need. Okay, so um, when we were putting together our budget, obviously the soup kitchen really didn't give us any money to work with and we weren't looking to put anything out of our pockets. Um, so social media is a free medium, so that's why we kind of targeted their Facebook page. Um, we also had like a resource that helped us print out our brochures for free, thankfully. Um, so we found a website to make a Gantt chart. Um, we like made the whole thing and then we were done and then we went to go copy and paste it and it was like, oh, you have to pay. $30, and we were like, oh, great. So we took a screenshot, so that's why it's kind of um, cut off at the end. But you get the gist of it. <laughs> um, let's see. So we considered our budget, and when we finished the Gantt chart, we deemed our, our whole campaign a success because we were able to finish everything that we wanted to finish without spending any money. Um, and we also... When we were planning our calendar, we had to plan around the Volunteer and Service Center. So we had to make that a consideration. We had to consider when we were gonna send out the press release before. And then, like she said, we also posted all of our like feeds on peak times when most of our friends were on Facebook. So that way we can impact as many people as possible. Um, we had to, we had like a shorter amount of time for the Hunger and Homeless Week and the Zoom Room survey, but our social media was throughout the whole campaign. Okay, the evaluation.
evaluation or evaluating our success throughout our campaign definitely had to do with um, Facebook and how many likes we received and like they have an insights page if you have like a fan page and it'll show the graphs of how many people have liked it over certain time periods. And um, we went from 144 likes to 222 likes on Facebook. And uh, we also, our traffic on the site definitely skyrocketed throughout our campaign. We started it on October 20, or October 17th because we couldn't get the information from someone who cares about the Facebook page until that date because we just had a lack of communication there. They wouldn't get back to us. But um, once we started the campaign, it was definitely a success. We saw over, um, our post views went up 1,216%, which is amazing because it went from 292 post views in the entire time period they've had this Facebook to 3,804 um, post views. And then our feedback also went up 3,600%, which showed us the, it showed in the graphs on the Facebook. Um, it went from one post feedback to 37 post feedback during our campaign. And another way we measured our success was through the survey on Zoomerang. We sent it out to um, Cal State Fullerton students through our Facebook page that we were friends with, like network, the Cal State Fullerton network. And we got, um, we found that 71% of the students that took our survey didn't even know about Someone Care Soup Kitchen. And because we saw the lack of the relationship between Cal State Fullerton students and Someone Cares, that's why we teamed up with the Volunteer and Service Center for Hunger and Homeless Week. And we received over 10, or over 10 potential volunteers for the soup kitchen. But um, overall, we found social media had the biggest impact on um, our campaign in general. And where we think that someone cares should go from here is they definitely need to expand awareness through their um, social media realm and definitely keeping it updated because um, it keeps the fans aware of what's going on in upcoming events if they keep doing like what we did. And we obviously got a lot more responses when we were doing the campaign than they have had in months and months prior. But um, also they definitely need to update and revamp their website, their actual like .org, because the stats are from 2003, it's 2011. That was a huge problem that we saw and where they need, they can help themselves. We can't help them there because they weren't willing to do that. Um, lastly, Someone Cares definitely needs to reach out to their younger demographic because all of their volunteers seem to be in the elder generation. And um, these are the people that are going to be the potential volunteers in the future and keep this organization running. So, thank you. <laughs>